wouldn't, you know, Richard's department wouldn't let anything be wrong. Well, the actors wouldn't let anything be wrong, the directors, everybody, we just, but we also shot this in seven days, which is remarkable. I, I don't know, you know, I'm doing shows now, we shoot 17 days, it's crazy how we did it. And we, every, every Monday we'd start at 6 a.m. and every Friday we'd end at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning, including the movie, so it was, but it was just to be prepared. Yes, and I'll add to Greg's um, lines right there. Just we just cared and loved so much what we were doing. I don't think we felt like I had paid for it, and it's just we wanted to be there. We wanted to do a great job. It's it's not a point of uh, yeah we got tired and exhausted, but there was a reason for it, and the whole production was something that was now. So it just was inspiring, and we just wanted to do it and get a great job done. Thank you. Um, I had a question for Carl um, about your character, which is somewhat a mystery, and no one really knows who he, or some people probably know. But, um, <laughs> uh, how did how did you think of him? Him. Well, it's um, uh, it's funny because I, I was reviewing uh, the last uh, the last episode uh, or a piece of it uh, this afternoon, and uh, I realized for the first time why I was saying the line I was saying, which I probably shouldn't say now because then it's takes away some of the fun of watching last episode. <laughs> um, but I, I thought of the character as uh, uh, kind of a psychiatrist from outer space. First I want to just say, uh, so my parents were entertainment journalists and uh, and my mom was a TV guide, so I started watching the pilot. You know, it was like my whole family watched it uh, from the get-go. So I, I was eight years old watching that, like just event TV for my family. So it's interesting to like, you know, see it again. Realize Bob's been terrifying me for 20 years. Um, <laughs> but um, my question is, just mapping it out, um, since it seems like David Lynch does uh, fly by the seat of his pants and whatnot. How do you map out, you know, who killed Laura Palmer? And, I think the real truth of it is they didn't know. No one knew. I, I think that that's actually it. it and when did you guys start uh, finding out? Was it like? I, I think it's uh, you know everybody has a different creative process. Different people have different processes altogether. Um, and this is an example of somebody with a very unique creative process. He and Mark together. I mean, it was really those two. That was the spark. You know, the Tony Kranz, the agent, put those two together. Brilliant agent. You know, sometimes agents are great, and he was a great one. Um, it, it was, I think, this idea, it wasn't, as Phil said, it wasn't about who killed Laura Palmer, it was about something altogether different. Uh, and it was as, as much of a mystery to them, Paula, you probably know, you know, because you were there at the very beginning, but it was as much a mystery to them as it was to all of us. And that was okay, it would be discovered. And it was discovered one day on a set in Seattle, and nobody knew it but David when he saw something, you know, a prop guy behind a bed that popped his head up. You know, and that became part of the mystery, you know, the solving of the mystery. I, yeah. I'm curious though, a couple of, you know, Bob Engels and even I think Mark might have said that, you know, they, they're really, they, they, they didn't even think that they needed to solve the murder. That's and absolutely true. What, wouldn't that have made Cooper a pretty crappy detective? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they didn't need to. It doesn't mean it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Okay. But it certainly wouldn't have happened as quickly as it as it did if the network didn't ask them to please do it for the sake of our network so we don't go under. Yeah. I, I, I just want to say, I think had they have, uh, had you have had a chance to sort of do this again today, uh, I, I think the, the engine that would have driven Twin Peaks today would be the town itself. Mm -hmm. yeah, no question. And, 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 and tragically, uh, at the time.
time, uh, network television wasn't sophisticated enough to understand that. That's why cable, if God exists, so we can do great television. Yeah. Yeah, and I do agree because having worked with Mark and David from the beginning and while things were winding down, it just, it didn't feel right in the end. You could tell things were getting pushed way beyond where, where anyone, including Mark and David, wanted things to go. So storylines, character lines, everything was going haywire and it's not the way it was meant to be. So it was, it died a premature death and it wasn't a pretty one and it's not the way anyone wanted it to go. So um, I don't care what anyone says, really they should have, well Mark and David should have been more involved also. I will be forthright and say that because had they been a bit more, um, a bit more involved, I, I think that they would have had better control over what was going on. I think there were too many hooks in the plot. I think there was not enough attention because we needed to have Mark and David there. But having the network drive like that and force the reveal, which wasn't necessary, just killed the show. Yeah, the network just misunderstood what the show really was. And Bill, you know, sort of admitted that. He knew, but he 